perhaps the single part, which is the most critical and important, and where all the reliability of a steam turbine is concentrated. Debuting the steam turbine parts and pieces series, today I'm going to talk about them. The pallets. The blades of a steam turbine are subject to the multiple unstable forces of steam during turbine operation. Vibration and resonance phenomena should always be considered in pallet design. The most important parameters in the design of the blades of a steam turbine are linked to resistance and vibration. Hello, this is TurboVac, the Steam Turbine channel, with more video from the Steam Turbine series. In this series here, I'm going to show and talk about the main parts of a steam turbine. I'm going to create a turbine demonstrative project step by step, piece by piece and video by video. And at the end of the series, we will have a complete turbine that I want to animate our works, and that will serve for demonstration, interaction, and creation of new content. Returning here to today's subject about the blades, to minimize the occurrence of factors such as vibration and resonance that can compromise the operation of a turbine, designers perfect the design, that is, their aerodynamic profile to optimize or even eliminate these factors. Most, if not all, modern turbine blades, they are already manufactured through a machining process, for some time now exclusively through CNC machines, which allows the machining of more complex aerodynamic profiles, which are needed today to achieve greater efficiencies. In recent years, with the increase in turbine power and advanced manufacturing processes, the size of the last stage pallets especially, they have been getting bigger. Among the main and different materials for the manufacture of pallets, stainless steels are normally used, as well as titanium alloys. The pallets are manufactured in these materials essentially due to their high resistance to flow, resistance limit, resistance and corrosion, and even the dampening of shock's mechanical impacts. We can divide the structure of the body of the pallets between the root. Together with the root, we have the skirt, which some people separate the root from the skirt. It has the profile itself, or body, and it has the rivet, or in other cases, in the absence of this rivet that we will see in the next videos, we already have the integrated strap. Going into detail, talking a little more about the blade root, the most common model is the profile called the T-profile. It is more used in turbines with lower rotation and smaller blades. Use of these pallets, a rather considerable limitation of effort. Another well-used root model is the Pinheirinho type. It is widely used on longer blades in higher rotation turbines. Pinheirinho is because of the shape that resembles a pine tree. Its shape. The assembly of the pallet on the wheel is done under very fine dimensional adjustment, requiring a very strict manufacturing process and quality control both at the root of the pallet and in the channel of the profile of the pallet on the wheel. The fit is almost free of play. There are still other root profiles we can say that less common. As high as the axial or side entry type root, mainly used where centrifugal stresses are very high. Other models are female fittings, that is, the blade that fits externally into the wheel profile. Each root has a recommendation and restriction of use depending on each project and what its manufacturer recommends. The profile of the blade body, that is, the steam passage area, can be symmetrical, like the RAID one, in the case of smaller blades of impulse or action turbines, which use high pressure. It can have the aerodynamic profile when we need to reduce stress, you know, centrifugal, and also twisted aerodynamics, kind of helical, or as we call the twist profile, basically a twist in the pallet, right? A reaction turbine blade uses this type of blade a lot. I already addressed this subject here in another video about action and reaction turbines. I'll leave the card up here for those of you who are interested. Go check it out. Beauty. The surface finish of these contact areas of the blade body with the steam must have a very fine surface finish. To eliminate as much as possible the effect of steam contact with the blade, that is, the fluidity of the steam, avoiding wear, the creation of cracks, micro cracks, erosion, flaws, vibration in the pick. In short, it is to try to avoid all this type of problem. The blades of each wheel row are always identical, except for the closing blades. They can have a different profile, mainly in the root region. The pitch of the pallets on a wheel, that is, the dimension between their profile center, is always constant. The pallets are usually fixed axially by means of closing pins that lock the closing pallet or one by one, and form a complex mechanical structure. The turbine blades are subject to dynamic forces because the steam flow enters the turbine 
It is projected in the circumferential and non-homogeneous direction, that is, the steam flow enters in a messy way. The blades in the low pressure region, closer to the turbine discharge region, are more exposed to condensed steam, which may contain small water droplets, and this can cause problems when they collide with the blades, compromising the efficiency of the turbine and reducing the useful life of pallets. Therefore, these pallets may have surface, thermochemical or even mechanical treatments to change the surface properties of the pallets in order to support or improve performance in this type of situation. But that's a subject for another video if you want. Are interested in knowing a little more about thermochemical treatments, mechanical treatment of pallets? Leave it here in the comments. At the beginning of the video, I talked about the vibration and resonance feature in the pallets to soften or correct or try to cancel these effects. There are pallet designs that use tie wire, which is that little thread or thread that connects one pallet to the other to try to neutralize this effect. I also made a video about this subject here on the channel. I'll leave the card up here too, so if you're interested, go check it out. But basically, that wire you see in the last stages of pallets. This was just a little about pallets. We're going to talk a lot more about pallets in the next videos, so subscribe to the channel. Today's video was just that. Folks, thanks for listening, and until next time. I want